Hi everyone, this is Dr. Vicki Johnson from Profello. Thank you for joining this event today. I'm just gonna give it a minute for people to come into the link. So please come on in, get comfortable. And uh, meanwhile, while we're waiting just a minute, just to give people time to come in, it would be great if you could introduce yourself in the chat, let us know where you're from. And I'm also gonna be asking people today, you know, what's your discipline or background? that you're interested in. Today's presentation is going to focus on professional fellowships, how to find them, how to apply to them. And so I'm really excited to um, help you, hopefully in this event, find some fellowships in your particular discipline. So please come on in, say hello. And uh, yeah, let us know where you're from. I love to see uh, where people are from. I already see Jose has says hello from Philadelphia. Awesome. That's near my hometown in Wilmington, Delaware. Come on in and say hi, where you're from, and uh, this is going to be a fun event today. So come on in, and I'm just going to give people another minute to come on in. Like I said, say hi in the chat. I love to see where people are logging in from. Oh, hello, Saichiko from New Jersey, Robert from NYC, New York City, Siam from India, Jose from Mexico City, uh, Crystal from uh, Maryland, Liz from Los Angeles, awesome. Yeah, come on in, come on in. And uh, today's event is going to be just one hour. So I'm going to do my presentation on fellowships. And then I'm also going to have some time for Q&A at the end. So uh, we're going to try to keep it to an hour. My events are usually a lot longer. <laughs> All right. So since it's uh, three minutes after the hour, I'm going to get started. Today's presentation is how to launch your social impact career through professional fellowships. I talk about a lot of different types of fellowships, including fellowships for research, grad school, and other types of things. Today, I really want to dig deep on professional fellowships. This was my first love in the profession, in the fellowships world. And here's why. Let me give you a little background on myself. So my full name is Dr. Vicki Johnson. You can call me Vicki. I'm the founder and director of ProFellow, which is the leading online resource for information on professional and academic fellowships. And I started out my career with the fellowship. So after I graduated from undergrad, I did a professional fellowship in New York City called the New York City Urban Fellows Program. This was a one year professional fellowship where uh, 25 recent graduates were placed in New York City government agencies in paid positions over a year. It was an awesome experience. I got to pick my placement, but also uh, as part of this fellowship cohort, we were part of a leadership development curriculum. We did study tours to Washington, D.C. and the state capitol. I met the mayor and heads of these huge agencies. Um, also, I was part of what was the 9-11 cohort. So I started my New York City Urban Fellowship just a few days before the World Trade Center tax of 9-11, uh, 2001. And then I ended up uh, requesting and getting the placement in the Office of Emergency Management. So that fellowship, initial fellowship right out of college, was my springboard into a 15-year career in emergency management and public policy um, and public health. During my early career, I also went on to do a couple other fellowships. Uh, after a few years of working, I also did the German Chancellor Fellowship. This was a unique opportunity to do a self-designed project in Germany. So it was an awesome adventure. I had the autonomy to go through uh, to do a project abroad and I learned German. I was also part of a cohort then. We did study tours all over Germany and Europe. So again, another incredible experience. Um, also in my early career, I did the Herbert Scoville Jr. Peace Fellowship, which is a six to nine month uh, paid placement in a policy think tank in Washington, DC. Uh, and these were uh, organizations that were working on uh, policy-based research in international security and peace studies. So I worked at the Stinson Center for about nine months. Um, in addition to fellowships, I've done my Master of Science in Public Health. I also did my PhD. And also at mid-career, I did a fellowship called the Ian Axford Fellowship in Public Policy in New Zealand. Um, and this was uh, administered by Fulbright. So I uh, like to call myself a career adventurer because fellowships, and in particular professional fellowships, have been a way for me to live, work, and travel all over the world develop expertise in a specific subject, also become a generalist though too. And they've also helped me in many ways to gain a very broad 
and valuable professional and academic network. And I've even changed careers. I've worked in government. I've worked in nonprofits. I've worked uh, in academia and I'm now a social entrepreneur. So I want to talk. This is why I'm so excited to share with you about these professional fellowships. Now, if you're not familiar with Profello, you probably are. But if some of you are not, this is what uh, our website looks like. It's profellow.com. And we are a social enterprise dedicated to helping people find these incredible fellowships and funding awards. So uh, the reason we started this website is because uh, many years ago, when I was early in my career, 20 years ago, uh, these opportunities were only really shared by word of mouth. So as you can imagine, that meant only certain people were hearing about them and applying to them. Uh, for me, I was doing really deep internet research to find these fellowships. Um, and, and you know, once I realized, once I found one, I was really curious to find more. So that was part of the reason I was able to go after these opportunities early in my career. When I became a PhD student 10 years ago, that's when we founded Profello. We wanted to become a centralized source of information to help you find these very unique funding awards that are funded by philanthropic organizations, nonprofits, government agencies, corporations, research institutes, you name it. So uh, we created this huge database. So there's a free public database at Profello. We also talk a lot about the competitive application process. And I'm gonna talk about that today as well. And so we do articles featuring current and former fellows. They share their experiences, they give their application tips, and um, we really try to highlight people who were typically underrepresented in the fellowship process back when I was early in my career. Um, we also do events like this. Uh, I've got resources for all different sectors of people. So if you haven't checked out Perfello, do so after the presentation, because I'm going to show you today how to really use this database. Now, um, oh, there's a little funky thing on there. What we, we have a very broad definition of fellowship. So typically when I ask people, do you know what a fellowship is? They, they think of a postdoc. They think, oh, that's for like grad students, right? But uh, actually we have a very broad umbrella term for fellowships. So we call fellowships short-term funded opportunities to do something exceptional. So fellowships are unique to jobs because they are generally short-term. They're anywhere from a couple weeks to maybe up to two years in length. A common length of a fellowship is one year. Also, um, we list funded opportunities. So the fellowships in our database will either come with a stipend or a grant or uh, are delivered at no cost to the participant. So there are fellowships out there that you pay for. There's fellowships that are you know, tuition-based or that you have to fundraise your own money for. We generally do not list those in our database. We only list the funded opportunities. And then we say they're to do something exceptional for two reasons. Uh, first, a lot of fellowships give you work experience or opportunities that you probably wouldn't find in a typical job at the same level. So they unlock new networks. They might have special programming or they just give you the autonomy to, to pursue a specific project. And that really is what makes them truly unique, unique to jobs and other types of, of things that you could be doing alternatively. They also though have a competitive application process, and this is a merit-based application process. So fellowships are not financial aid. They're not based on your financial need. Fellowships are really um, looking for people in certain sectors with certain skills or talents or passions and they are investments in people who are going to help solve big social challenges. So they are merit-based. They're picking people who are the best fit for the opportunity. So I'll talk to you a little more about what that means. Now, why would you want to apply to fellowships um, and particular professional fellowships? Well, uh, fellowships are unique in that you may be uh, given funding to pursue a self-designed project or do research, even as a professional. And uh, often there's not many opportunities to do that sort of thing. So that makes them unique. Um, some fellowships also allow you to gain high level work experience in your industry or in a new industry. So some of these do function like full time work placements for a short period. And it gets you kind of your foot in the door or gives you high level experience. Also, they can give you funding to work or study abroad. I love international fellowships. I did two myself, one in Germany, one in New Zealand. And uh, what I found is that there's often not many opportunities to go abroad other than if you do a self-funded volunteer project or 
if you pay for graduate school abroad or try to get a job, all three of those are financially and logistically challenging. What's awesome about international fellowships is that they provide you the funding, the infrastructure, visas and cohort that you need to have a successful experience abroad. There's also fellowships that can help fund graduate school. I'm not gonna go too in depth on this today. I do a lot of other events on grad school funding, but there is um, graduate school fellowships as well as funding uh, fully funded graduate programs. Uh, and in all cases, fellowships help broaden your professional network, which is very important as you progress in your career. So I did a couple of early career fellowships and was able to really broaden who I know professionally, academically. I captured all of my networks in LinkedIn, or at least when it started. And it was a great way to meet not just leaders in your field, but even connect with your peers who also end up going on to become leaders in, in certain fields. So your network is really important as you progress in your career, uh, because the further you go up in your career, the more likely you're going to be getting to land jobs and opportunities primarily through your network. So I think fellowships are a great thing to do, especially early in your career, but they can also be done at mid and late career. Now, uh, we bucket fellowships in two kind of primary categories. One is uh, professional fellowships, which I'm going to talk about today. Like I said, these are uh, funded opportunities that function like uh, full-time work placements. Like I said, anywhere from a couple months to a couple years, that will, it's typically a one-year placement. Or they may provide you funding for a specific project. So if you're a social entrepreneur, an artist, um, or someone who's doing uh, like a socially impactful project, some of them provide you project funding and autonomy to work on something. Um, on the other side of the spectrum is the academic fellowships. These are the ones that people are usually more familiar with. So these provide funding for graduate study, research, stu like student research, postdoctoral research, which you might do as a postdoctoral degree, and even research for experienced scholars and faculty members. So I bucket those in the academic category. There's also some fellowships that straddle the two, professional and academic, giving you a bit of both. Now, um, Fellowships, and this includes professional fellowships, have an application process that's much more similar to applying to graduate school than it is to applying to a job. So fellowships often will require a resume or academic CV. You often need to include a personal statement or some sort of personal essay talking about your goals, your motivations, why are you applying. Sometimes that's also short essays or short answer responses. Many fellowships require two to three recommendation letters or references. So you have to have a couple people that can vouch for you. Also, some fellowships will require a project or research proposal. So uh, the fellowships that I did abroad, especially in Germany and New Zealand, I had to propose what I was gonna do during the fellowship year. So I had to come up with a solid and feasible proposal. Um, also, some fellowships will need you to be in touch with a host institution. Um, again, this is a, a more common for international fellowships. For my, for both of my international fellowships, I had to find a host institution before applying. So I had to be in touch with institutions abroad, get them to agree to be my host and my and and host me during the time of the fellowship if I want it. And also, the host can be really instrumental in your project proposal and your application if you pick the right host. Um, also, virtually all fellowships have some sort of interview process for the finalists. So if you make it to the finalist round, it's likely that you'll have to go through an individual panel or group interview. So that's very common. Now, likewise, uh, fellowships, the deadlines for the fellowship awards are typically much far in it, very far in advance of when the opportunity or funding begins. So right now we are in what I call fellowship application season. Even for professional fellowships, uh, often they tend to sort of fall on the academic year. In the United States, that means they begin either in the, in the summer or around that September time period. And so that's because they're trying to get people who are graduating from undergrad or from master's and doctoral programs. So often the fellowships begin around that August, September timeframe, but the deadlines for these opportunities will be between around now to January, February. So this is what I call fellowship application season. However, there is a lot of types of fellowships. There are fellowships that have deadlines in the spring and the summer. Um, but for the most part, the fellowships, because they have this more in-depth application process, 
This is why the opportunity typically does not begin right away because they're doing a whole selection committee uh, review of your applications. And so it's unlike, it's, it's quite different from a job in that aspect. So for those of you, let's say you are in your final year of undergrad or your final year of your master's or doctoral program, and you want something that's gonna begin next summer, next fall, you'd want to look at fellowships now um, and start looking at the application deadlines and the application components. You might wait till March or April when you're looking for permanent jobs that begin right away, but now is the time to look ahead for these fellowship opportunities. Now, I'm gonna give you all a little demo of the profellow.com database so you can see how to find professional fellowships. We have, uh, we have uh, also other types of fellowships and fully funded graduate programs in this database. Um, so what I'm gonna do is hop over to, I'm gonna do a different screen share, so hold on. Let me share my, turn the screen share on. All right, I gotta go to this window or Chrome tab. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, hopefully everyone can see this. All right, so this is what it looks like inside the profellow.com database. Now, when you come to the homepage, um, to get into the database, you will need to create a free profellow.com account. And this just creates your profile. So at profellow.com at the homepage, you can click the uh, get started button or sign up. And this is gonna prompt you to fill in some fields about your discipline, your education level, your background, your citizenship. Just so you know, um, we only collect this information so that you can more easily use the database. Or if you sign up for our mailing list, which I highly recommend, um, sometimes we will be able to email you opportunities that uh, match your background from our, from our key partners. But just so you know, we never sell anyone's information. So other scholarship websites and things uh, do, do some practices where they're selling information. Uh, we will never do that as a business model and the database will always be free. So uh, you want to come in, create your account. And also just as a quick find, part of the reason you can click a profile filters here and it'll fill it in based on what you filled out at your signup. Um, but I'm going to start with just the clear filters so that you can see how to use this database. So right now, we have 2,420 programs listed. So this is not this is not individual awards. These are programs. So there's actually thousands of fellowship opportunities in here for individuals because some programs have as few as one or two to tens or sometimes even hundreds of uh, opportunities at once. So this is programs. Now um, in the program type, this is probably where you're gonna get started. You'll see that we have uh, some key buckets. So for academic fellowships, we have fellowships for undergraduate students called undergraduate fellowships. This might be funding for tuition or undergraduate research. Um, likewise, master's fellowships. This is for enrolled master's students and also doctoral fellowships. This is for enrolled doctoral students. So if you're already enrolled in a program, you would be looking at these here for opportunities. You know, these can fund research. Um, sometimes they fund professional development while you're a student. Um, uh, for undergraduate level, often it funds uh, research as well. Sometimes they provide tuition, uh, but these are competitive and most of them, uh, virtually all of them are merit-based. So just be aware of that. There's also summer fellowships in here. These are like funded professional fellowships just for the summer period. And in the US, that means uh, the period between May and uh, August. So it's a summer fellowship. Um, if, if you're in the Southern hemisphere, there may be summer fellowships um, in your, uh, your summer period. <laughs> but these are for the most part uh, geared toward uh, summer fellowships that happen between that May and August time period, which is the break, the summer break in the US academic year. So there's summer fellowships in here that provide uh, funding to law students, um, uh, specialty, um, you know, this is an HBCU fellowship, Kapoor Fellows is a venture capital fellowship program. These are almost like high level internships that you can undertake in the summer. And uh, they're great, you know, they're funded and a good way to get your foot in the door into lots of different opportunities. We also have listed in our database fully funded PhD programs, and we have fully funded master's programs. I'm not gonna talk about these today. I do a lot of events on graduate school funding and full funding. 
Um, so if I may direct some of you, if that's what you're here to learn about, uh, I'm going to direct you to some other events you can check out to learn really in depth about fully funded programs. But if you're looking for funding for graduate school and you haven't yet enrolled in graduate school, you should look at these programs that offer funding at acceptance. Now, today I want to talk about professional fellowships. So we have uh, nearly 675 professional fellowship programs in our database. And so, again, these are programs that might offer funding for a full time work placement, project funding. Um, some of them are also part time or virtual. So they might be something that you do in addition to your full time job. Some of them are about leadership development. So they all have a different focus, purpose or mission. Now, if you want to further narrow it down, let's see, you're like, yes, this is what I want to look for. Then you want to filter by discipline. Now, you'll notice over here, these are really broad discipline categories. I think there's 12 here. So whatever your discipline is, try to think what your, let's say your discipline is not listed here. You want to try to think what a broader discipline it would fall under. So for example, if you're interested in journalism, that would probably fall, that would fall under communications. If you're interested in public health, that would fall under medicine and health sciences. If you're interested in economics or political science, that would fall under social sciences, liberal arts. There's business, there's creative arts, engineering, um, technology. So there's STEM fields, science, engineering, technology, law. International affairs is both for people studying international affairs as well as um, opportunities that are international. So these are really broad. But like I said, um, you can you can choose this and look through. Let's say there's um, a bunch of these are, you know, there's 128 results categorized under medicine and health sciences. Now, just so you know, there's two different types of programs in this category. There will be programs that are specifically for people with medicine and health backgrounds. They're geared toward that. They're specific to public health or biomedical science or other things. There's also programs, though, that are multidisciplinary, meaning that they would look that they are recruiting people from all different disciplines. Um, so, for example, you'll see this very first fellowship recently added is for veterans. Now, this isn't specific to health or medicine, but it's in here because uh, they this is for veterans of all sectors, all backgrounds, all disciplines. So let's say you were a veteran and you uh, were in the health, uh, the health service or medical service as a veteran, um, you would be eligible for this particular program because you're a veteran. But if you wanted to narrow down, you could use the keyword search up here for words like public health. You know, to find these, these will have uh, words like public health in it. Now, if you use the keyword search bar, just so you know, the word that you put here either is displayed in the title, the description, or in tags on the fellowship. So if you use a really, um, if, if you're using subdisciplines in here and you're not finding anything, um, it might be because uh, you're making it too narrow. I really encourage people not to get too narrow in their search using keywords and subdisciplines, because again, you might be able to do a professional fellowship. Let's say I work in public health. There might be a broader a policy fellowship or a medicine related fellowship under which I as a public health practitioner could participate in. So. You could look specifically at these that mention public health, or you just look, you just spend some time to look through all 28, 128 results here. Um, and also let me show you too, uh, when you click on a listing, it'll take you to a page that looks like this. We created very short descriptions of the fellowship programs so that they would be easy to skim. But this is not all the information about the program. And in fact, you may still have a lot of questions after reading the very short brief description. Again, this is meant to be a discovery platform. It's very simple and brief. So what you wanna do is go to the website to learn more about the uh, veteran. This is the Veterans Leadership Program. I don't know if you guys can see the screen, but I just clicked go to, <laughs> go to website to, uh, oh wait, share this tab instead. Okay, so I just clicked that website and this is the new George W. Bush uh, Presidential Center. So this is where you would go from the fellowship listing to learn all about this program. What is, what's the format? Who is it for? Am I eligible? And if you have questions about this program, you should contact the fellowship staff at this organization. They may have info sessions. I'm sure they have, you know, contact information on here um, and they'll have the application information. So Profello is a discovery platform. 
The key place to look uh, to learn about the program is at the organization's website. Now, let's say you read a little bit about this and, you know, you're like, well, maybe in a couple of days, I want to look at this more closely. You can save this to your Profello account. This is actually currently saved. If it's not saved, it'll look like this and you'll just see add to favorites. You just click that. And then when you go back to the database, um, your favorites will be listed here under this yellow, uh, this big blue button over here. So anything that you bookmarked will be there. Um, so just go there if it's like, okay, I wanna see my bookmarks. Now let's go back to the searching again. So we, we've narrowed down a little bit. You can narrow it, like I said, you can do broad disciplines here, which is what I recommend. Look through everything in your broad discipline, or you can use the keyword search to try some subdiscipline words. I'm gonna open this up again. Now for location, this is the location of the fellowship. If you're looking for a fellowship in the United States, you would choose North America. These will primarily be fellowships that are in the U.S. or could be done in the U.S. So you'll see many of them are in the U.S. However, there's also uh, you can also choose Africa. There's 103 opportunities where that can be done from Africa. There are 129 opportunities that can be done from Asia. And likewise, so Europe has quite a few. So some of these are, there may be some fellowships from anywhere um, because it's funding research perhaps. Others are more place-based. So I would use these to figure out if, let's say you're in Africa and you need to stay in Africa or you can't travel, then look through the programs that are listed in Africa here. You can also, if you wanna find something that's in a specific country, again, you can use the keyword search to find uh, the country. Now, I say if you are if you put in a country and you get zero results, think about what's the broad continent, because there are, for example, fellowships that are European wide. And if you put in Germany um, into your keyword, it might not show up because they're not going to list all of the countries in uh, Europe on this one brief listing. So if you're interested in, say, Germany, try you can try Germany in the keyword. Germany has a lot of fellowships, but let's see you put in... Um, Let's see, is there anything from Denmark? See, there's zero, but I would still, so I would encourage you to look just generally at Europe. If say you're trying to find a fellowship in Denmark and see you know, if there's something that you can do from Denmark here. Now, another key thing to do is to put in your citizenship. So if you are a United States citizen, you can put in US. This will help rule out, uh, this will take out of your list programs that are not open to US citizens. Likewise, if you're from a non-US country, you can put that in and you will find there are a lot of opportunities open to non-US citizens. Now, the one thing to note, though, is that if you uh, if it's an opportunity, say, in the United States, you do need to look more closely at the eligibility requirements. So this is a teaching fellowship. I believe this is based in the United States. So this might say that US citizenship is not required but um, it may require that you have U.S. work authorization or a U.S. student visa. So typically, um, fellowships are not going to provide work visas to international applicants. That's relatively uncommon. Um, however, if let's say you are an, an immigrant, so you don't have citizenship yet, but you do have work authorization in the U.S., you may be open to this. So I would say if you are in the U.S. on any kind of visa or any kind of student or work visa, I would also encourage you to put in United States under your citizenship filter. I know you don't have it as a citizenship, but um, I would not want you to rule out opportunities that you could potentially apply for. There's also a broad uh, work experience filter. So um, a lot of fellowships actually don't have a specific uh, work experience range or age range. You might, you'll see that for some fellowships, um, but for example, like this stand to veterans leadership program. There's no, there's no work experience requirement or uh, age range. This is open to veterans of all levels. So that's why, you know, uh, I don't know, we probably would have bucketed this under all three. Uh, let's see, where did we do it down here? Yeah, so this is, oh, maybe they want, they probably expect some work experience because you are a veteran. So you would have at least, you'd have at least a few years of work experience from being a veteran. But that's why, uh, again, I would keep this broad. So if you're looking for things, if you're an undergraduate student and you don't want to look at things that are for like mid-career professionals and faculty, put in less than five years. If you're something more uh, mid-career, you could put in five to 10 years 
or if you are truly, you know, mid or late career, put in 10 plus, it just helps you to filter it down some. But again, it wouldn't take you long to skim this database. So I wouldn't narrow this down too much. This is not a perfect science, these, uh, these categories. So I just would hate for you to rule out something that you could potentially be eligible for. So this is how they use the database. We also have um, like newest, um, this, this shows newly added fellowships. So we recently added a bunch of veterans fellowships to celebrate Veterans Day. Um, you can also sort by deadline. So you'll see a couple of these just passed November 15th, but if we scroll down, you'll start to get into the ones that are December 1 um, and later. And also if you sort the other way, you'll see there are fellowships that have what we call rolling deadlines. This means one of two things. Either they have uh, truly a rolling deadline where they're taking applications at any time of year, or they have like so many deadlines for different categories, we, it was too difficult to <laughs> keep it updated. So for this one, let's see what it would show. Um, this one might be, so you'd want, this is for example, the Secretary Honors Program at DHS. Um, you'd, uh, this might truly be like a rolling deadline because they're um, looking for people to go into career pathways in Homeland Security. So you'd wanna go here and learn more about when should I apply? What are the eligibility requirements, et cetera? So I would say, you know, um, <laughs> just if you, if you also wanna just see like uh, additional opportunities go here, look at these uh, rolling deadlines. I'll also mention we have an open calls page on Profello right up here in the menu bar. These are opportunities, many of which are brand new that are being uh, promoted by our partners. So for example, this William D. Clark Diplomatic Security Fellowship is a brand new program. This is a great place to find out about new professional fellowships. This is providing funding for someone to go to graduate school, but it gives you a career pathway into the diplomatic security service, which is the security wing of the foreign service. Um, there's different grants for social policy. There's grants for scientists, multi-country research, nuclear security. You'll find all sorts of interesting stuff on this page. So keep an eye out. These all will have upcoming deadlines. Now, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, since I'm talking about professional fellowships, I want to hop over to the chat. Let me see if I can see the chat. Probably not. Hold on. I want to look at the chat to see. Um, I want to get some ideas so I can help someone search. Um, let me know uh, if you put, put in some ideas. If you were looking for a particular type of professional fellowship, whether you're a recent graduate, a mid-career, Put that into the chat. Actually, in the meantime, what I want to show you is a few fun keywords. I always get asked about mid-career fellowships. It's a total misnomer that all fellowships are for recent graduates. We have fellowships that are um, literally uh, categorized for mid-career. So use the term mid-career with a dash. Um, you can also look at part-time fellowships. These became popular. We've started to uh, mark ones that are part-time, meaning that you might be able to do them in addition to full-time study or full-time work. Um, there's some virtual fellowships. We're trying to mark those as virtual. I think the word remote was also used as well. Um, so, you know, some of the key areas where there's like a lot of fellowships is public policy, um, STEM. There's lots of fellowships in STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, there are professional fellowships in things like public interest law. There's lots of um, environmental fellowships. So we just use the word environment as a tag. You'll see 67 here. There are fellowships specifically geared to women. So you can use the word women in there. You can also use veterans. If you are BIPOC or from a minority racial group, use the word minority. And you'll see specific ones that are either specifically for minorities or actively recruiting minorities. Uh, okay, let me hop over to the chat now. And let me just see if people put some ideas in. So Tiffany says, I'm looking for a health science social impact fellowship that pays a competitive salary. Ooh, that's a good question. So Tiffany, um, I will, I didn't mention this early on. Fellowships do tend to not pay what you would call a competitive salary. So if you're comparing a fellowship stipends and salaries to a similar level role in say, you know, corporate or nonprofit, what you're probably going to find is that fellowship stipends tend to be on the lower end. 
um, that's because they have a different purpose. A lot of these fellowships are for specific discrete projects to kind of help people get into an industry. Um, they're also small investments that organizations make. Um, so the, you will find it challenging to find, you know, well, quote, well-paying fellowships because they're not really intended for that. But let me just say health sciences, you know, there is, you could use the word health sciences, but I would encourage you to just broadly look at in the medicine health sciences discipline and look through here as to what might work for you. And if you have a specific health, health science, maybe it's psychology, you might want to look, oh, there's not, oh, did I misspell that? I did. <laughs> psychology. Oh, no, nothing's coming up for psychology. Let's try counseling. Counseling. Am I spelling it wrong? No, nope. I guess there's no professional fellowships. I know there's graduate fellowships. Uh, I know there's a lot in public health. Um, you can also look at STEM in the medical health science. So there's a couple ways there, but honestly, for just the field of health sciences, I would say, you know, put in, let's say you want to do U.S., and maybe let's say you're a nice, I don't know if you are, but let's say you're a United States citizen. I would just say, take some time. These are very skimmable and you can go through and uh, read these. A couple, these first couple ones are for veterans because we just added them, but go through these. There's lots of fellowships at the CDC, um, Career Development Award for people working for the Lupus Foundation, Activate Fellowship. There's, a, like I said, lots of CDC related fellowships. That's our Centers for Disease Control in the U.S., um, Welcome Trust Early Career Awards, um, Health Equity Fellowship. We also have generally, um, let me take this off for a minute. We also have, we do use the word social impact on some awards. I will say though, virtually all fellowships are social impact fellowships. Um, so we, although some really specific to say social impact, you can pretty much guarantee you're gonna find socially impactful uh, elements of virtually all of these fellowships. All right, let me take a look here. Someone said uh, lifestyle medicine research. So for lifestyle medicine research, I would encourage you likewise to look under the, um, the uh, medicine health sciences discipline. Someone asked about social impact or racial justice. Good question. Social justice is a word uh, that's used quite often when talking about racial justice or um, other types of uh, programs that re relate to racial justice. So use the word social justice in professional fellowships and you'll find um, these are, you know, this is, for example, is leaders engaged in poverty alleviation and economic justice. There's a writing as activism fellowship, public allies. They're focused on, I think, uh, youth work. Um, there's civic change makers, black utopian fellowship for black artists, researchers and scientists. So there's lots of interesting there. So I would just say use the keyword social justice. All right, human resources. Now, I don't, you know, human resources doesn't tend to be, that's not a common discipline for fellowships, but let me just put it in here. Um, I think because, uh, yeah, there is a few human resources. I'm not sure if these would be what you're looking for. I do, it's somewhat rare to find fellowships focused on human resources because it's more of a, um, a technical field related to helping organizations manage things like benefits and salaries. But um, there may be something here where you as a human resources professional could either get experience in another field or apply your technical skills um, to other types of work. So again, I would just leave it broad. Also, let's say you're in human resources and you're like, yeah, I want to go into teaching, use education, or I want to learn more about business. Um, business, the business discipline might be a good place to look as well. Let's see, um, someone says, uh, Jose says I'm a sociologist, specializing in social change. All right, uh, let's see if their sociology would be the right. Let's see if that comes up with the keyword, sociology. So there's a couple that specifically mention sociology. Now I'm only looking under professional fellowships. If you look under, there's probably lots of research fellowships in sociology. So uh, I think the only reason I'm finding few for professional is because it's more of a research field. So I would say, take a look at both types. Um, Janelle says, interested in a community assistance for domestic violence and addiction services. I think Janelle, that probably would fall under the broader medicine and health sciences. So again, um, for a project that's related to that interest, I would recommend that you kind of 
look through all 128 results here and just see if there's something here. Now, I don't know if I put an addiction, for example, there may not be something that specific. Yeah, I don't see anything that specific. But there's definitely, um, there's definitely professional fellowships related to community services or community service. Community service is a big one, but also social services, I think. Yeah, social services comes up. So you try to, you got to play around with different keywords to see uh, what might come up there. I'm going to take a few more and then I got to talk about application tips. Um, let's see. Chris said, oh, I'm seeking for a professional teaching artist fellowship that, to provide music on HIV, AIDS, BIPOC, LGBT. Awesome. I would encourage you to look at professional fellowships and then look under uh, creative arts. Um, you can do it more specifically to music if you wanted to. That would narrow it down quite a bit. I would still encourage you to broadly look at the creative arts. There's 144 results. I know that seems like a lot, but again, um, there may be specific creative arts uh, programs that, I mean, there could be programs that are either multidisciplinary or specific to music. So there is some music fellowships in here. For example, here's the Shum Artist in Residence. Um, that's specific to uh, this group. I think that's German. There's ones for native artists. Um, well, there's the Baltimore Sym Symphony Orchestra that has a special fellowship working with children. There could be something in here that um, relates to this, Beckman Emerging Artists Fellowship. So again, use this broad creative arts discipline. All right, and then um, let's see, fellowships on mentorship training. Ooh, good question. I'm not sure, I can't say I've heard of mentorship training. Let me try this, mentorship. There's, there's definitely fellowships through which you can receive mentorship. So a lot of them mention that you will get mentorship. Mentorship training might be a little harder to find, but what I actually would put in is the word leadership. There's a lot of leadership development programs. And so for some of these, through it's more might be more commonly called leadership, although I know that's quite different to mentorship. I still would encourage you to look through, uh, use the word leadership applied here and see if it um, any of these might provide training in uh, leadership. Like, for example, New Sector Alliance Leadership Longevity Fellowship. This one's focused on mental health and wellness, creating a support supportive community of peers for people that work in nonprofit with uh, 12 nonprofit professionals. So this is a really unique fellowship. So this is me. Just have some fun. Come and look and uh, try words. Try lots of different keywords to see if you can find. Think of words that are related to what you're interested in. And also, um, you know, could be other expressions. And always look at the broader discipline using this big keyword search here. Okay. I need to talk about application tips. So for, um, if there's time at the end, I can do a little more searching. Hopefully, though, this has given you a good broad overview of the database. So let me get back over to my slides. Let's see here, start, start. Okay, now let's talk about getting into these programs. So as I mentioned, these programs, even the professional ones will have a competitive application process that's more similar to applying to grad school. But unlike applying to college or grad school, you know, it's, they're not really, looking to select people who have, it's not really about having the highest GPA from undergrad or having already lots of awards on your resume. These programs have a particular purpose. And so um, I'm gonna give you some secrets into getting into these programs so you can understand you know, what they're looking for in candidates. So my first tip that I always give is to make sure to align your goals. For all of these opportunities, these programs are not really about your goals. They're about the funding body's mission and goals. So although you do get personal development, leadership development, uh, educational experiences through fellowships, for the most part, that is not the purpose of the fellowship. Uh, all of these uh, fellowships are funded by organizations like nonprofits, philanthropic organizations, foundations, government agencies, corporations, research institutes, et cetera. And so um, when they create a fellowship program that's investing and in selecting people, usually there's some broader social impact mission that they have. And it's important for you to know what that mission is. Number one, to make sure that what you're aligned with the program and truly are a good fit for the program. 
but also you can make the case in your application as to why you should be selected. So always when you look at a fellowship, you want to look at the organization's website to look for a mission statement. What is the mission of this funding body? What problems are they trying to solve? Who are they trying to help? Um, and that can give you a sense of what they're trying to achieve with the fellowship program. If there's limited information, you can also uh, take a look closer at previously funded fellows and projects. For example, if it's, if it's a creative arts organization and it's not really clear what the mission of the funding is, you know, look at who they've selected. What did they focus on? What were their topics? What, were, what was the body of work that they funded? That can give you a sense of what's important to the organization and what they're investing in. Um, you can also look at what they brag about. So I always tell people that when I first applied for that New York City Urban Fellows Program, the one year fellowship in New York City government, you know, back in the day, this was back in 2000, it was a one page website. It literally said, here's the program, you know, email us for the application. Here's the deadline. And that was it. There was no mission statement. Um, I didn't I didn't know, you know, what's the mission of the New York City government, you know, <laughs> running a city, you know, so it wasn't really clear. What's the what's the purpose of this program? However, I did read in an article uh, as I dug deep, I was trying to find information and the director was quoted in an article saying, you know, 80% of our fellows go on to work long term in New York City government. And they, that's what she was bragging about. So I thought, oh, that is the mission of this program. They're taking 25 recent graduates, giving them an opportunity to work in New York City government for a year with the hopes that they will go on and work in New York City government long term. So they didn't state that on the website. I had to figure that out through internet research. So um, when I prepared my application, I didn't have the highest grades. I was not an honor student. I didn't even have internships on my resume. I did have a lot of community service on my resume. So I really focused on my dedication to service. But I also said, you know, I want to work in New York City government long term. And that was an authentic goal of mine a long time ago. And I really do think that is the reason my application beat out other candidates from all over the country who had better grades and, and internships and other things, because a lot of them were probably saying in their application, you know, after the fellowship, I want to go to law school. After the fellowship, I want to go work in the national government. After the fellowship, I'm going to go go international or do some other thing. And see, that would not have been in alignment with the goal of the program, which is to get people to come and work long-term in New York City government. So this is what I mean. You've got to dig deep and find out what is the mission of this program. Now, the next thing you have to do is be highly specific. Um, a lot of people, I always say you should state a really highly specific post-fellowship goal and the, the future social impact that you want to make in your career. This is important because a lot of people don't state their goals. They don't really state what they want to do beyond the fellowship. And so the whole application is focused around getting the fellowship and there's no future vision of how is this helping them achieve something bigger and more uh, and long term. So it's important to state a career goal. What do you want to do post fellowship? And this is so that you can say to the selection committee what you're going to get out of this fellowship to get to that goal. So if you are applying to a, let's say, a public service based fellowship, um, the end goal is not getting the fellowship. The end goal might be that, you know, you want to get specific experiences or skills or networks needed to found your own nonprofit or to work in a leadership position in a local government agency or to get more expertise so that you can be more culturally competent working with certain populations. There should be some post fellowship goal. And I encourage you to be really specific about it. So don't just say generally I, I want to work in nonprofits. You should be specific about, I want to work in a strategy position in a nonprofit like Kiva that's focused on helping women entrepreneurs uh, uh, get microfinancing for their development projects. Like it should be that specific. So name a specific type of role, a specific type of organization with an example, if possible, and then a specific social impact goal that you have, a mission that you have in your career. Part of this is to help make the case what you're going to get out of the fellowship that's going to be valuable, but also a highly specific goal instills confidence that you know how to achieve your goals. You know, it's, it's much more uh, it, it's much more interesting to invest in someone who has really specific vision for the future 
than someone who's kind of just exploring options, right? So keep that in mind. Now, this does not set your goal in stone. This is for the purpose of making it clear to the selection committee why you, why this program and why now. And it's important that you make that case because you're going to be up against people who are making that case. Now, this ties into my next tip, number three, which is storytelling. So storytelling is always something I've been um, talented at because my I grew up in the household of a Lutheran minister. So my father is uh, a great storyteller. He's very good at connecting with his audiences and um, telling stories that have a certain purpose or goal. And I learned that from a very young age. And so this was a skill that I was applying to my applications early in my career. Now, the, the purpose of an application story that I call is to make the fellowship the hero in the story. So you're not the hero. Um, the funding is not the hero. Really, the fellowship program and what it provides is the hero. So the application story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, in all cases, you have to tell the organization about the beginning of the story, your background. They're going to ask about your background, your motivations. You know, they want to know a bit about your career trajectory. So that's the beginning of your story. So you talk about what you've studied, professional work that you've done, and sort of what's motivated you to be where you are now in this particular point in time with this particular goal. The end of the story is the future. That is that highly specific post-fellowship career goal. So you have a vision for where you want to be in two or five, two to five years, right? So you talk about where you want to be, why you want to be there, and why um, the social impact that you want to make at that later point in your career. And then the middle of the story or the hook is how the fellowship is going to help you achieve the goal. And the key is to demonstrate that without the fellowship, the goal may not be achieved. This is the key. Many of these fellowships are truly unique. You might be thinking, well, what, you know, I could do anything to go like before law school or I could do all sorts of other things. But a lot of these fellowships do provide experiences, funding and network that you're not going to find in a typical job or uh, in an alternative thing like graduate school. So it's important that you hone in on what's unique about this fellowship. So, for example, I found early, very quickly in my career, how difficult it is to get a government job in the United States. Often you have to have a network or some sort of in. So for me, New York City Urban Fellows was a way to get an in into New York City government. I didn't know anyone there. I had no experience. I didn't even have any related internships from other cities, right? I had nothing to go on. The New York City Urban Fellows program was my in. And that was the case that I made in this program. Uh, likewise, international fellowships, often there's very few opportunities to be paid to go abroad. Um, creative fellowships, you know, there's not, uh, you know, <laughs> an abundance of funding for all creative projects. So any one fellowship can be really extraordinary. This is true really for all the fellowships. Um, so think about what can you get out of this fellowship that you would not get in any other alternative opportunity. Hone in on that in your story. Now, next, uh, my third, fourth tip is to add urgency. So if you can, you should explain why you need the fellowship right now and not in another year or another two or five years. This is because all of these fellowship programs get more qualified applicants than they have spots. This is, this is true no matter what you're applying to that's competitive. There will always have plenty of qualified applicants who make it to the finalist round, but a limited number of spots. So often when they get to the finalist round, they are picking people based on pretty small differences among candidates. And so one difference that could help is to have some urgency to your application. So this can help, you know, um, edge out another candidate who has less urgency to start the fellowship. So let's say you're going to propose a project, whether that's professional, creative or research based. I would say tie into that project um, something like you're going to study what I call a fleeting phenomenon. So that means you're going to look at something that's happening now, but is not going to be happening in the future or will be different in the future. So in my field, in the disaster field, I was looking at impacts of disasters on communities. You know, it's only a certain way in that period of time. Um, also, uh, you can try to tie it to something in the news, something timely, you know, topics that relate to like urgent social events tend to stand out. So if you're looking at any, what are we have so many big issues of the day? Climate change, uh, political insecurity, 
you know, uh, educational inequality, pandemics, um, you know, social media, technology. There's so many issues that we can draw on. I would say try to get involved in something that's very timely right now, something that's in the news. It gives it a bit of urgency. Um, also, again, if you're proposing a project, you could also talk about how your fellowship project is going to be part of a longer term initiative. So maybe your fellowship project is laying the foundation for a, a bigger initiative, maybe with your employer or a dissertation or some other thing. So think about, could this be a foundational piece um, that helps a longer term project? And then also prep for grad school. So if you're early in your career or even if you're mid career and you're thinking, I'm going to go on to do a master's or a Ph.D., um, you might find that you're pursuing a fellowship to get more experience, right? To get better prepared for something like a PhD. PhD programs often expect you to have research experience, for example. So maybe you do a fellowship to enhance your research experience on your resume or get experience that you don't have. Um, also, maybe there's language skills or technical skills that you need before applying to graduate school. So that's another urgency factor. So these are just a few ideas. Get creative with it. Try to think how you can explain why you need the fellowship right now and not the following year. My final, oh, my final tip, tip number five, is to speak to three former fellows. I found that a key difference between success and rejection is that winners spoke to former fellows. So you'll see, uh, you can often ask the fellowship organization if they can introduce you to a fellow. That You might be able to meet them through like an info session. Um, also use LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn aggressively. You can find people by putting the name of the fellowship in. You might find that you have a first connection uh, or you might only have a second connection. That means you have a mutual contact who can introduce you. Even if it's a third connection, I would say um, if that's all you can find, introduce yourself politely through an email to the person. Let them know that you're applying to the fellowship and that you'd love to speak to them briefly. Um, intros are always great if and when you can get them, but if not, you know, do your best to try to do a little cold outreach. University alumni are a, a great way to find fellows. So let's say you have no connections that are first or second connections. You can also ask your university, hey, have any done this Fulbright Scholar Award in the UK? Or has anyone done this, um, you know, the White House Fellows Program from uh, your alma mater? Ask the university, they might know, but you might also find them on LinkedIn. Oh, I see a Cornell grad went, did, was a White House fellow. I'm a Cornell grad. So you can reach out and sort of connect with them based upon your, your connection through the university. So there's a lot of ways to kind of get uh, two fellows. If you get a meeting with a fellow, come prepared with some specific questions. Don't kind of leave it like, ah, oh, let's just chit chat. Come prepared, you know, ask them questions about what do you think is the mission of this program? What have you noticed in the people that they've selected for it? What is the selection committee like? What did they ask you during the interview process? Hey, could you take a peek at my project proposal? Do you think this is feasible, what I'm proposing, now that you've been at that foreign country? Do you think this is feasible? You know, there's a lot of specific questions you could ask them. So make the most of your time with them. My final uh, tip is that you need to get into a winner's mindset. A lot of people get really hung up on the competitiveness and oh my gosh, they get hundreds of applications and they only pick five people. But keep in mind, this is, again, it's not uh, an award for winning awards. They're not picking people just because you have lots of accolades on your resume or a 4.0 GPA. They're truly trying to pick people who are the most aligned with their social impact mission. And you do need to show a demonstrated commitment to the field, to the service or the issue that they're talking about. So if you can do that, not only will you be a great fit for the fellowship, no matter what kind of academic background you have, you know, you will be deserving of this opportunity. So think about, you know, really hone in on the things that you're most aligned with. That's the best way to go about the fellowship process. Now, again, you'll go to ProFellow, create your free account. And I say, when you get on uh, the ProFellow database, uh, click that button to get on our mailing list. Like I said, we've got a popular newsletter that goes out every Tuesday, and that is uh, show showcasing our newest articles, uh, open calls for applications, new fellowships, and upcoming deadlines. So that regular uh, weekly email kind of keeps you in the know of new things that are happening. And uh, we also have lots of events, and you'll also get those through our email list. So I'm over time. I'm actually on the hour. Let me just take another five minutes, if it's okay, to see if there's any other questions I can answer in the next 
five minutes before we close out. All right, and let's see here. All right, so Janelle had asked, do you need to enroll in school or have a recently graduated from college to apply for fellowships? Oh no, absolutely not. There are fellowships at all career levels. There's fellowships for people just graduating from undergrad. There's fellowships for people that have a minimum of two to five years of work experience. There's fellowships for people that have a minimum of 10 years work. There's also like late career, mid-career fellowships. So it really is at all career levels. Um, my only key would say if it's um, unclear from the website of the fellowship, you know, what career level is this for? Sometimes you can get a clue from the stipend level. If the stipend is pretty low, it's probably more geared toward a recent graduate. If it's a little bit on the higher end, um, it might be that it's more geared toward experienced professionals. They're trying to create a competitive salary. Again, you might find that it's a little lower than what you'd get on in a similar job at that level. But um, you really do want to get a sense, is this more geared toward recent graduates? Is it more geared toward people kind of five years in, like late 20s? Is it more geared toward people in their 30s and 40s? And or is it more geared toward experienced researchers, established artists, people who could be, you know, 20 or 30 years into their career? Um, that's important to check out. OK, someone asked, I would love to find fellowships that allow me to keep working in my organization outside us, but still be part of a new network. Yes, I would recommend looking at part time fellowships. Um, use the keyword part time in the database. So with a dash part dash time, um, those will be fellowships that you can do part time. Some of the big ones I remember, uh, there is uh, the One Hotels Fellowship by Environmental Entrepreneurs, E2. They have a part-time fellowship. It's a 20K award, a $20,000 award. And it's basically to help you um, propose a project within your existing organization that comes up with a, the economic business case for doing something around environmental conservation. So maybe you're working with your organization to replace all the light bulbs or something into um, better energy uh, conserving opportunities. Or there's, there's some other thing that could help either in your organization or your community um, with um, creating environmental conservation with an economic benefit. So there's some like that. That's the big one I remember. Um, there's several other part-time fellowships. Some are, you know, you can be part of a network and just uh, be in this virtual seminars, or it might be an in-residence seminar over a weekend. Often that's funded or at no cost. So yes, there's definitely some neat opportunities like that. Use the keyword part-time. Okay, Akshali, hello. Akshali said, is there a fellowship whose structure and type is exactly what you want, but it's in a country that you have no prior background or language skills? How do you determine a good fit between mission type and country? For example, uh, for example, uh, German chancellors. Oh, great. So uh, I, it depends on how important it is to the funding body that you have language skills or background. Some fellowships are geared toward people who have uh, the language skills and even potentially in country or research related to the country. Meanwhile, other fellowships are more geared in that they want people who have no experience in the country because the mission is to get people who have no experience, who will come and have a cultural immersion, learn the language. So it really depends on the mission of the organization. So this is why I say you want to research the mission. Now, the German Chancellor Fellowship, um, this may have changed, so don't quote me. When I applied for the German Chancellor Fellowship, and this was back in 2005, we did not need to have any German language previous uh, experience. Although I did uh, start German language training before the fellowship and even during the application to demonstrate that I was committed to learning German because they were going to have a, a German uh, a German immersion. So when I came to the fellowship, I did find that about half of the fellows had, you know, you know, medium to advanced fluency in German. And the other half had zero or beginner level uh, German experience. And so for the German Chancellor Fellowship, that was perfectly fine. They, they, they wanted a mix of people and they made that clear from who they selected and they provided language immersion. Um, that said, uh, also Germany is a place where people do speak English fluently for the most part as a second language. So you can get by in Germany pretty easily without knowing German. This is not the case in many other countries. So some countries, you know, like in Europe, there's a lot of fluency in English. 
as a second language. In other countries, that may not be the case. So the other question is, is can you really undertake the project that you're proposing with limited language skills? And the answer may be no. So that's something that you have to talk to fellows about, talk to the fellowship organization, and to see like, can I even feasibly do this project with being only a beginner or having no fluency? And it also would be important to know if the fellowship is gonna provide funding or, or, or courses for you to take the language so that you can become more fluent before you get there and during the, the event. So the best answer is it depends, but that's how I would sort of figure it out. Um, and let me go over here. Thank you. And yes, I am going to have a, uh, I am going to have a um, replay of this out to everybody. And I'll take one more question also from Akshali. She said, uh, for mid-career professionals, how do you choose between a fellowship and a regular job in your field? Especially if it would be a huge pay cut. Good question. This is down to personal preference. I'm not a financial advisor, so I don't want to definitively say, oh, sure, take a fellowship if it's a big pay cut. Um, some people cannot financially uh, handle a pay cut um, mm -hmm. based upon their financial commitments. Um, it really depends on what is your goal. If your goal is that you're trying to shift careers, you're trying to get more experience that the fellowship can provide, you know, it, the benefit from the fellowship would have to outweigh the downside of having a pay cut. And then, of course, you also have to see, do you need to quit your job, you know, to undertake the fellowship? Because often these fellowships do not guarantee a job at the end of the fellowship. So that's something important to know. So at mid-career, those decisions can be a lot more difficult than even in early career. They can also be more difficult in things like a recession. You know, can, is it worth take the risk of taking a one-year fellowship with lower pay with no guarantee that, you know, there's a job at the end of it? Again, it all depends on what are your goals and what can you financially handle, you know, realistically. So, um, again, I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not going to uh, mention that. But I would just say the potential benefits of the fellowship would have to outweigh the downsides for you personally. All right. Thanks, everyone. Those were some great questions. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you for coming. I'll get the replay out and uh, enjoy the database. We look forward to seeing you at Profello, and I hope to see all of you in another event. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care.